With the embargo of Shin Megami Tensei 5 levied, and various gaming-focused platforms releasing their reviews of Alice's new major title in the franchise, attention has turned to said reviews for impressions. From this, attention has turned towards IGN for its SMT5 review written by Leanna Hafer. At first, when it was being discussed on a Source Gaming server, the talk was about how the reviews had some comparisons to Persona and that SMT fans were not happy with the two series constantly being compared, even though it's reasonable as to why. But then I saw the like to dislike ratio in a screenshot and became incredibly skeptical. What the hell could have been said in this review to make people this angry? Upon starting the video within the first sentence, I felt like I had an inkling of where this review would go. Shin Megami Tensei 5 feels like the edgier, less sociable younger brother of Persona 5, even though Persona began as a spin-off of this series. At this point, if you haven't read or watched this review, go do so. I don't intend to follow along with the review word by word like a reaction video. I'm just going to talk about it as if you've already seen it, as I have. The link is below in the pinned comment, so go click on that if you're not aware. While the review isn't all about being a comparison to Persona 5, that is in fact the biggest problem out of the few problems that exist within the review. That is not to say that you shouldn't ever compare one game to another, especially in franchises that are similar or stem from one another, but it is about the framing of how it's done. To begin, I think the basic framing of a review should be an analytical dive that breaks down the core elements of a piece of work, art, literature, media, etc. that tells the audience in a critical matter how the reviewer experienced something, if said thing can be recommended for the audience to also experience, and what they should expect if they choose to do so. Those core elements are not going to always be the same between different reviewers, and the framing can vary as well. With a different framing or focus in mind, the critical analysis and explanation to support or help get across that framing should still be present. Such framing is usually presented to the viewer based upon the title of the review or what's stated to be the main point of contention, like the thesis of an essay. In that case, the statement made by Liana at the end of the introduction What's missing from the Persona formula here is a lot of its heart, but Shin Megami Tensei 5 still rises to succeed in most other ways brings about the point that even though SMT5 does have qualities that allow it to succeed, the major problem is that it is missing something from the Persona formula. The heart. Although this statement comes after a previous statement referring to the fact that Persona is a series that spun off from Shin Megami Tensei, I believe that the earlier statement presents the issue that Leanna was looking forward to Shin Megami Tensei 5 being like Persona 5, instead of solely looking at Shin Megami Tensei 5 for what it is on its own. Now, this may come due to the fact that this is Leona's first time playing a Shin Megami Tensei game. While not stated directly, the implication comes about during her statement when discussing the difficulty and battle mechanics of the game. And mastery is basically a necessity unless you want to play on one of the easier difficulties. Shin Megami Tensei has a reputation for being a brutally difficult series and I was able to see why. Since said reputation was brought about before SMT5's release, Leanna would have previously also had experience and potentially agreed or disagreed with that perspective, rather than finding it out just now. Another reason why she potentially refers to Persona 5 is that she refers to herself as a massive Persona fan. Where SMT5 consistently fell short for me as a massive Persona fan though, was the writing. As stated by Leanna, the heart of the Persona series are the unforgettable characters, the twist and turns, and the potent personal story. While the disappointments that Liana expresses about SMT5 are stated, a lack of quick personal motivation, and companion characters being underdeveloped, how can someone who hasn't played Persona or Persona 5 understand that? While it is being stated that Persona features these things that SMT5 doesn't, a viewer that has not played a Persona game does not have the context to understand in what way Persona achieves or SMT5 has failed. In what ways are Persona's characters tied to the gameplay? How well is the balance of focusing on a personal story and the story of the companion characters? Is this just the case with Persona 5, or is this the case with all the other four major Persona titles as well? This problem also addresses itself when Leanna talks about the music, as she states, The music is pretty good too, though it isn't even in the same league as Persona 5, I have to say. Now, while someone can compare the music of Persona 5 to SMT5 from the soundtrack alone and state which they like more, they'd also be missing out on the context that also surrounds the music, thus not allowing them to comprehend what makes Persona 5's music better. To be fair, discussing music is a difficult thing to do. In my own reviews, I also deal with the issue of describing what I like or dislike about a title's music. 
If you're not versed in the study of music or composition, you'll have difficulty in stating what the music does well. But the least you can do is try to contextualize how the music helped in impacting different scenes, moments, battles, or parts of the world. Saying that it's good isn't enough. And telling us that you like Persona 5's music more still doesn't tell us why you think that way about SMT5's OST and what was missing to potentially make it better. Now, some people may say this doesn't matter as Leanna still gave the game an 8 out of 10. Even though she gave the game a high score and it may seem like a lot of people care about the score when it comes to reviews, what really matters is how you get to that score. Even with the negative points that are addressed, it's clear that the gameplay was able to carry itself enough to earn SMT5 an 8 in Liana's view. If she was someone that held a bigger weight in caring to the game's story, even if the gameplay was fine, I imagine that the score may potentially be lower. Perhaps a 6 due to the lackluster true ending as stated by her in the review and its lack of similarities to Persona. Some people may also state that this is just someone else's opinion and this won't affect how you play the game. I think both points aren't a genuine acknowledgement of the conversation and what people's points of contention are. If you're not a person that cares, that is fine. But people have and will continue to have discussions and agreements or disagreements in regards to one another's values, opinions, and even the method of expressing those opinions. That is a major part of conversing with other people. To be clear, I don't think the review is bad, I just think it has faults. I don't have a problem with Liana's wanting to compare her experience and thoughts of Shin Megami Tensei 5 to that of Persona 5. In fact, I think that's something that she may have wanted to elaborate on more, but because this is meant to just be a review of Shin Megami Tensei 5, the idea is to talk about that game, to state what its problems and positives are. What I think may have been better for IGN to do was to pick a writer that has experience with the Shin Megami Tensei series and ask them to review it, not only on its own merits, but also on the merits of whether it succeeds in being a successful new title in the lineup of games. Then, also have another review that allows Liana to take the focus and give her the space to further elaborate on what this title is like for someone who is new to the series and has experience with the tangential, similar Persona series. But perhaps none of this stuff actually matters. We all know that once the Advanced Wars remake drops, reviews will feature mostly negative criticisms but still feature a 10 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other ones and subscribe for what I talk about and create in the future. Perhaps you'd like to see my own reviews and maybe you end up disagreeing on some of my points or believe I could have said something more. There will be a playlist down below in the description and you can add me on Twitter if you'd like to talk. Thanks for watching.